Now, uh, remember, theta was supposed to be arbitrarily close to one, but not one or more. It's coming to the middle. Let's define one minus theta, which is a positive number of the p-dash. So theta is uh, one minus epsilon. Okay. I now I have to reach in the drawer and come up with the binomial theorem because I need to take the a plus first power of 1 minus epsilon. So this is a sidebar. Does anyone recall if I have 1 plus x to the t? And uh, x is strictly greater Let's just say absolute x is strictly less than 1. And t is any fractional, negative, whatever. What's the, uh, what's the expansion? It's 1 plus, this is a great point of view, number 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial, and then t to the factorial exponent k, where t to the factorial exponent k is t, t minus 1, down to t minus k plus 1, so that there are k terms in the product. So t to the exponential k power, or the factorial power, rather, if t to the 1 factorial powers is t, t to the 2 factorial powers t times t minus 1. It's not t squared, it's t times t minus 1. You lose 1 each time. Yeah. Um, you've got t to the k and you've got the arrow. Are you just defining the t to the k as the derivative? Yes. Just elaborate. Now, Rob says, isn't there n choose k there? In the event that t is an integer, Eventually, you'll get to zero. And then, once you get to zero, all the terms after that are zero, and the infinite sum becomes a finite sum. And just think about what do you, what do you have? You have? You have t times t minus 1 down to t minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. Uh, if you if you then go below this, uh, t minus k, t minus k minus 1, then it up down to 2 and down to 1, right? I have to put the same thing downstairs, but what is that? That's t minus k factorial. So upstairs I would have t factorial, and downstairs I would have k factorial, t minus k factorial. That's your t choose k. So only in the case where t is is a positive integer. Does this thing poop out and all the terms beyond are zero and it becomes a finite sum? If, if t is a fraction or starts out in the whole as a negative number, it just keeps on going negative, negative factors. You should learn about that. And, and, uh, but in that one case where you have a positive integer, then it collapses. But in this thing, t is a factorial exponent k over k factorial becomes t choose k. With me. Okay. Remember the theorem, uh, as as Fermat stated, it applied to a greater than minus one. So um, we we have to use this this case because it could be a it could be uh, you know x to the one half. This formula would apply to that. Weirder than that, it could be like x to the square root of pi. He could do that in 1636. <laughs> I'm amazed. I really am. 
Anyway, okay. So, uh, what do we have now? Yeah, we need to use this formula on theta to the a plus 1. So what would it be? I want, I want 1 minus epsilon to the a plus 1. I just want the first two terms because what I'm going to do is argue that as epsilon gets smaller and smaller, the rest doesn't have so what's 1 minus epsilon between a plus 1 using the uh, generalized binomial theorem? Off with. Okay, 1 minus epsilon to the a plus 1 using the generalized binomial theorem. Well, fill in the blanks. It's going to be 1, that's that 1, right? And then I'm going to have uh, minus epsilon to the first power divided by 1 factorial times um, t to the factorial 1. And, and that would be uh, a plus 1 thing. Plus other terms. So if I chop off the other terms, what's left? 1 minus epsilon times a plus 1. OK? So now, we go back up here. And uh, fill in the blanks. Sum of rectangles. Equals b to the a plus one. One minus theta is epsilon, right? Definition. And then one over one minus theta to the a plus one is one minus this. This is this goes here. One minus epsilon a plus one. Ah, you did it. Um, one minus one. Change the sign of that. Cancel those. And that's the power rule, circa 1636. Okay, so uh, that that is a very clever word. The guy just pulled that one out of thin air. The epsilons drop out, so it's 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 not dependent on how small epsilon is. Implicitly, it is when you drop the terms out here. But if epsilon is small, epsilon squared is even smaller. So within any desired accuracy, let epsilon go to zero. And and uh, basically, he, he was anticipating an awful lot. He, he was, maybe if he hadn't been a, a lawyer and been a full-time professional mathematician, he would have been a fun mathematician. So he was certainly integrating, uh, integrating power functions, rather general ones. Okay, so that's uh, from Ross' contribution to integration. Now, there's another presentation in our book 